the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. It's a wonderful thing to be back here at my house, at your house, at the house of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate this good day. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my prayer, through my own transgression. Therefore, I ask your forgiveness. All you one with me and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling place to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes. Its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. The word of the Lord. Blessed the man who follows love, the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the on his love day and night. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. He is like a tree planted
From the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is in vain. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground with a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes toward his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude and insult you, and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are now Filled, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when I speak, when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord. church. So we hear from our Lord today what it means to be blessed. 
Now, growing up in a small Baptist church in North Alabama, there was always this little lady who would sit in the front of the church and greet people every morning. And we would walk into church and we would ask her how she was doing that day. Miss, Miss Carla was her name. We would always say, Miss Carla, how are you doing today? And she would always respond the same way. She would always say, greatly blessed and highly favored. How are you doing today, baby? She would always respond the same way. Just a few weeks ago, my grandmother actually passed away. She went on to be with Jesus. But in the last few weeks of her life, I got to talk to her quite a bit. And one of the things that I remember her saying when I was asking her about her life and asking her about her faith and asking her if she was, she was prepared, she said this, the Lord has put me through it all, he has been with me through it all, and he has blessed me through it all. So we have very different ideas of what blessedness means, and today our Lord is telling us what he means, what it means to be blessed. Blessed just means to be happy comes from the same word that we get beatitude so we're hearing luke's version of the beatitudes this morning blessed are the poor now is jesus saying it's good to be poor is jesus saying it's good to not have anything well no he's not glorifying in the fact that people live in abject poverty what he's saying rather is happy are those who do not cling to material wealth in this world I'm thinking in particular of those who would pervert the gospel and turn it into something for their own gain. Think about TV preachers with big, giant, unnaturally white teeth and 1-800 numbers. That's what we're talking about. That's what Jesus is warning us about. Don't cling to the material wealth of this world. It's passing. Tomorrow the dollar will be worth less than it is today. Tomorrow the euro will be worth less than it is today. Tomorrow the pound sterling, whatever. That's what Jesus is warning us of today. Happy are you if you do not cling to material wealth. Blessed are they who hunger. Is Jesus saying it's good for us to see children on the television who don't have enough to eat? Is it good for us when we're we're hungry? No. I don't know about you. It's not good for anybody when I'm hungry. But blessed are they who hunger. Rather, happy are those who do not cling to the sensual pleasures of this world. Sensual pleasure is not always a bad thing. We were made to feel good. We were made to feel things that point us to what is good for our bodies. Things like food and sex and uh, those things that are ordered rightly are good in the plan of creation, but we don't cling to those because those are also fleeting. Blessed are they who weep. Jesus is not saying he, he glorifies in, it, in our sadness, no. What Jesus is saying here is don't cling to good feeling. We live in a world today that's addicted to good feeling. We're always after the next high. We're always after the next shot of dopamine. We're always after the next good feeling. And many people will sometimes do crazy things to get to the next feeling. They'll put things into their bodies. They'll do activities that aren't good for them. But we're always chasing after that next good feeling. So happy are you who do not cling to that sensual pleasure. Blessed are the persecuted. Again, Jesus is not saying here, it's a good thing that the church is persecuted. It's a good thing that people have died for the faith. That's not what he's saying. What he's saying here is, happy are you who do not seek the honor of men. We live in a world that is fickle. We live in a world where next week the tastes will change from what they are this week. We live in a world where the star of today will be really the dried up husk of a person next week. We don't go after honor and we don't organize our lives around it. Honor in and of itself is a good thing. It's a flag that we put on a person that says, be like this person, these virtues are worth imitating. But again, we don't get addicted to chasing honor. We don't get addicted to going after those things that next week could change in the face of the crowd. Rather, happy are those Who's find, who find honor in the Son of Man. So we have to ask ourselves, then where does our heart belong? How are we blessed in our hearts? Where are our hearts rooted? Jesus turns the Beatitudes around and starts saying, woe to you, woe to you, woe to you. But rather, I think another image that we can use from the readings today is Jeremiah, when we talk about those who move away from clinging to the things of Christ. Jeremiah uses the image of a tree out in the middle of the desert. 
When I first moved to the Diocese of Yakima, I come from a place that's really green, very verdant, it rains all the time. Yakima is not so much that farther south. <laughs> I had to get used to a whole lot of dried up brown bushes, trees that just didn't look like they should belong there, and they looked quite sad. Um, you know, things that, you know, you were afraid if someone threw a cigarette on them passing through a car, the whole town would go up. That's what a Christian is like who is clinging to the things of this world. That's what a Christian looks like who isn't living rooted in the things of eternity. But Jeremiah turns it around and he says, but rather blessed is the man who is rooted deeply in the things of God, who is rooted deeply in the things of Christ. His roots go down, deep into the groundwater, like one planted firmly beside a river. Now, what Jesus is saying here is that things will go wrong. Again, I refer you back to the pearly white teeth preachers. Just because we trust in Christ doesn't mean that everything will go right in our lives. However, if we organize our lives correctly, according to the Beatitudes today, Jeremiah tells us that we are ready when bad things come. We are ready when drought happens or when flood happens, because our roots are deep. And not only are we ready to survive the drought, but rather we are ready to thrive through it and continue to be green. Because this has an eternal dimension. Jesus is talking about living a correctly ordered life now. Jeremiah is talking about living a correctly ordered life now. But St. Paul tells us that we are also ordered for eternity. If we are to preach a Christ that we hope in only today, how pitiable are we? What, is it, what does it matter? If there's nothing after this life, if there's nothing past now, why can't I live my life the way I want to? St. Paul tells us this. But rather we have a deeper hope. We have a hope in Christ. Because that's what it means to be rooted, to be blessed. It means to forsake everything else, to follow Christ, and to put our hope in the blessing that he gives us in the world to come. And so we must pray, my brothers and sisters, this morning, that when we do finally come to that moment, when we face the eternity, that we have ordered our lives correctly, that we haven't clung to the wealth, to the sensual pleasure, to the honor of this world, but rather, when we come to the end of our lives, we can firmly and boldly say, he put me through it all, he has been with me through it all, and he has blessed me through it all. Amen. Would our candidates and catechumens please come forward? My dear candidates and catechumens, the scriptures readings for today encourage each of us to put our trust in God. A trust that goes beyond the boundaries of the here and now. There is also a challenge in the reading that I encourage each of you to take seriously. We are asked to take a long, hard look at what we really value in life. Go now in the peace of Christ to reflect on the scriptures and break open the words of God in your lives.
let us profess our faith. I believe, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father, born of the Virgin, life from life. sit at the right hand of the Father, to come and give to us to be one with us, for this kingdom will have no end. The Lord give us life, to seek for the Father and the Son, for the Father and the Son. I confess for our baptism forgiveness of sin. Blessed are they who trust in the Lord. With confidence, let us place our needs before the God who loved us. For the synod on synodality, may the divine spirit fall anew upon them in the synodal process and renew the church in unity of purpose as we listen to one another and strive to bring forth God's reign in our communities. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those entrusted with the leadership of the nations, may they dedicate themselves to freeing the planet from war and the threat of war and to the generous sharing of resources to lift up the downtrodden, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For growth in faith, that we may recognize our need for God in every part of our lives and deepen our trusting reliance upon God who provides all that we need for life and wholeness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice, and compassion to guide how we Americans welcome the stranger into our midst, we pray. For all married couples, may they reverence, love, comfort, and strengthen one another, always gifting each other with forgiveness and healing, we pray. For the seriously ill of our community and among our family members and friends to be gifted with compassion and the healing touch of our God, we pray. For all who are grieving, that those who have lost loved ones, their health, employment, or freedom may know the presence of God who wipes away all tears and who brings light into every darkness. We pray. For all our beloved dead. May the kingdom of God's eternal rest and peace be theirs. We pray. We pause to express in the silence of our hearts our personal intention. For those intentions, we pray. Gracious God, give us faith to trust in your Son and to live each day in that trust. We ask this to Christ our Lord.
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, that even fashion for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall may become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adore your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one choir of exultant praise as we acclaim you. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this mystery. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and gave you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and give you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving the holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, and Joseph Tyson our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all the children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that it is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive those who trespass us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power of our days, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Take away the sins of
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, am I worthy?
Let us pray. Having fed upon this heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live. Through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. was announced last week and people are prepared right now. There will be a second collection today um, focused on prepares. Prepares which offers pregnancy and parenting support, an initiative of the Washington State Bishops, is to provide a nurturing response and promise to mothers and fathers who have chosen life. A promise of support and care for pregnancy to their ch um, from pregnancy to their child's fifth birthday. Regardless of religious beliefs, this parish-based program offers low-income families vital life-affirming services. Statewide Prepares has supported thousands of families with one-on-one -on -one companionship and child essentials. To learn more, volunteer, or donate to the uh, Bishop's Prepares Valentine Appeal, visit um, www.preparesforlife.org. 100% of your donations will go directly to serve families in need, thanks to the generous support of the Knights of Columbus Council 676. And now I'd like to invite um, one of the school volunteers who will be announcing um, the auction. Good 
charity. To love thy neighbor doesn't mean loving only those in our family or only those that agree with our ideals. Supporting St. Joseph Have a Heart Auction will allow the school to continue to teach the love of neighbor and other virtues in the young of our community. There are so many ways you can support our school during the week of February 13th to 19th. Donate through gifts of cash, get a Hearts of Gold raffle ticket for dinner each night this week, order from the restaurants donating a portion of their proceeds to the auction. Check daily on auction items and keep bidding. Share the auction website with your friends, family, and neighbors. St. Joe's School has been and continues to be a pillar of academic es excellence and faith formation in the Wenatchee Valley. Um, and it is because of the St. Joseph Parish community, um, our prayers, volunteerism, and financial support that we're able to provide the children of this beautiful valley um, with, such beautiful, uh, with such a beautiful place to grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ and to learn from the most caring educators around. We hope to see you all online this week at www.stjoesauction.com. Bid high and bid often. <laughs> I just have to add something. I have the great privilege every week of going in and teaching religious ed in Nicholas's classroom. He is as dynamic there as he was here, and I just can't wait because he will eventually, I'm sure, become one who proclaims God's word at our, our school mass every Friday. But Nicholas, thank you very, very much. <clears throat> For those that may not have heard, he said, bit high. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ, glorifying God by your life. Thanks. Have a wonderful morning.